What do you mean, Rabbi Tai? Uh, a lot of questions come up, many, many questions about this issue. Uh, since I've been uh, young uh, here before we went to Israel, uh, 30 years ago, 35 years ago, people were talking about this already at that time. The question is like this, uh, regarding the issue with the bugs in the, uh, in the salads, you know, and the lettuce and all kinds of things like this, which are not being checked properly and all kinds of issues. Uh, so, you know, uh, the truth is that in Eretz Israel, the system works better over there, and the reason is because they have something called the uh, Gush Katif over there. So what is Gush Katif? That means it's greenhouse grows, grown vegetables, which are relatively uh, bug-free, uh, relatively speaking. All you have to do is wash them, you know, basically, and they're good to go. Uh, but here we have that too. The truth is now it's coming out, this kind of thing. But not so accepted, not so readily uh, available like it is over there because uh, over there, like, you can get anything, you know, whatever you want. Uh, parsley, uh, dill, right, uh, all kinds of things like this, and uh, uh, the uh, cilantro, you can get that too, and the lettuce, and uh, the romaine lettuce, and all kinds of things. Over here, they have more limited, and not in every area it's available, and the quality is also not so good sometimes, sometimes old, sometimes it's not fresh. So the truth is, you know, that in America, it's still, you know, it's not, it hasn't really caught on to be used everywhere, in every place, uh, in every time, this kind of thing. And the truth is, you know, that uh, the Badar Abanim in Queens, are not, they're not really so vigilant about this, you know what I mean? So what does that mean? They're not really using these uh, greenhouse-grown products. Really. So because of that, what happens is that uh, a lot of people are worried, can we eat there, blah, blah, blah. And uh, right, these questions are going on for years already, you know? People are always worried about this. People are always asking questions about this, and they don't know what to do. I remember when I was younger, you know, I had a really hard time because, uh, uh, you know, what my rabbis were telling me was not ex what was what I was seeing, you know, like in in in, uh, in reality, uh, two different things, you know. There's what the rabbis, and then there's the real picture of what's going on, the exactly the opposite. You know what I mean? <laughs> so it was it was very frustrating, you know. So the truth is, you know, that recently I tried to. I decided to look into this more carefully a little bit, you know, to see uh, what really the halakha is, you know. And one thing, by the way, I have to ask, you know, regarding this question. Very simple question I have for you regarding this issue. I want you to stay here. Excuse me. Excuse me. Can you just stay here for one second? Because I want to ask you, this, this question is also for you. I'm sorry to bother you. Maybe you're, maybe you're not busy, you know, right now. I just want to ask you a question. You know, the question is like this. I usually don't bother you. I'm sorry. But, because this is like a community question, you know, we, have, we all have to deal with this. You know, so we all have to understand what we're dealing with here. So, uh, what I wanted to ask you is like this. Before there was these greenhouse grown products, right? Were people eating, uh, you know, uh, parsley and uh, cilantro? They, they were, right? So now, what, what happened? Now, all of a sudden, right, what? Uh, now everything changed. No, if you, don't, if you don't buy that, you can't eat it, right? That's what they're telling you. So what were they doing before? You know, what, what happened all of a sudden, you know? So sometimes, you know, when you, when, I'm sorry, I'm going to let you just, one, I just want to say one thing, I'll let, I'll let you talk. Uh, I want to hear what you have to say, by the way. I really do, I want to actually, want to hear what you have to say. But what I'm trying to tell you is like this, that uh, before, you know, everybody was eating these things. So there must have been some way to do it, you know, because there was also Rabbanim before, what? The Rabbanim didn't come, you know, just created, they were not created today, you know, the rabbis. From Har Sinai, we have Rabbi Rabbani, Moshe Rabbeinu, you know? And from, uh, so what, did they tell you about Greenhouse, uh, these, these Rabbi Rabbani? All of a sudden, now they're all talking about Greenhouse. You know, so the question is, is it really halakhically obligation to use those products? Or really, not really so. It just maybe, okay, you know, let's use some dirty words, right? Excuse my expression. Is it just business, you know? They're trying to make a buck on us? Is that what it is? I don't know. You tell me, I don't know. What's going on, you know? The truth is, I'll tell you something interesting, and I'll let you make your comment. I'm sorry to, to hold you up, but I remember about 10 years ago, you know? Uh, maybe a little bit more. What happened was that there was a little bit of a, a scuffle between Maran Rav Adil Shalom and Rav Amar, you know, who was at that time the chief rabbi of Israel. Now he's the chief rabbi of Yerushalayim. Right? He couldn't hold his job for more than 10 years, so he had to get a different job. That's the way it is, you know? 
So what happened was like this, right? That Rav Amar, all of a sudden, you know, one day he came, you know, he decided, he got this, you know, brainstorm in his head. You know what he said, Rav Amar? He said, we don't really need those gush katif, you know, those greenhouse grown things. Yeah, we could live without that, you know? Uh, he tried to tell people like this, you know? So when Maran heard that he was trying to tell people like that, he had a discussion with him, you know, and he told him, he said, listen, you know, I'm sorry, but I don't agree with you, you know, like, we should keep on doing the greenhouse, the, the, the Gush Katif. Why? Why are you telling people not to, not to use it? So Rav Amar told him, he says, the reason why I'm telling them is very simple, because they use a, a large, uh, they use a large uh, amount of, imp uh, um, imp uh, what do they call those? In pesticides, right? Which are, which are poison, you know, basically, a mild poison for, 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 for you and me. So, uh, you understand what I'm saying? So he said, those are dangerous for our health. And that's why I don't, want, I don't like them. I don't like these products. In order to come up with a good, uh, with a good uh, conclusion, with good results from those greenhouse things, they have to use in pesticides, a great uh, large amount. Marat didn't accept his uh, thing. He said, ah, listen, they're not eating anyway too much of that stuff. You know, it's just a minor thing in their diet. You know, it's, uh, so what if they're using pesticides? Not the end of the world. It's not going to kill nobody. Nobody dies. Okay. They will we'll live. We'll survive. You know, give me a break. You know. That's what he told Mara, of Amar. So, you know, Maran was uh, the, 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 the Rav, and the Rav Amar was the Talmud. You know, so he got his way with him. You know, he told him. He told him, basically, shut up. You know, like, don't, stop saying these things. <laughs> you know? So he did. He, he did shut up. You know, that's what happened, you know. It's a different discussion, what happened over there in the end, right, with that whole thing, but I don't want to get into politics now, but the point is like this, you know, that the truth is that, you know, uh, Rav Amar, you know, uh, had a point. I mean, what, what happened? What, all of a sudden, now we need to do everything Gush Katif. What, before we didn't need, uh, what, the, now all of a sudden this thing came to the world? Now what, bugs were created only 50 years ago, the bugs? Before that, there was no bugs, right? There was no, <laughs> I'm sorry. I can't hear you. Can you speak a little louder? The what? I'm sorry, the bass? Less bugs. What? Less bugs. Less bugs, okay. Yeah. Yeah, it's true. Okay, so what you're saying is now we have less. So it, that other average should be better, you know? So then, but they're telling you now it's worse. <laughs> so what's going on with that? What do you say? I'm sorry, you want to say something? I, I stopped you, I'm sorry. Okay, very good. They were checking. Okay, good. You're right. It's true. Oh. Okay, so listen, when, when I was your age, I thought it just exactly like you do. I thought, I thought that was the right thing to, to say. You know? But honestly, you know, Let's face it, I mean, you know, if you've ever been in the kitchen and you're looking at petrosilia, you know, parsley, and you're looking at uh, uh, cilantro, right, things like this, it's impossible to check those because the leaves are so small. What are you going to do? You're going to check every leaf? You're going to be there for the whole day. Who's going to check these things? There's no way to check them. Oh, that's, the whole, that's my question. That's exactly my question. What happened all of a sudden? Today, everybody's at home. Yeah. Right. So the truth is, you know, I understand what you're saying, and a lot of people use the, these things, but then there are also some rabbinim who say that doesn't really help. You know why? Because they say that there are some bugs, like thrips, you know, they're called. You know, they stick to the, so nothing, nothing takes them off. So okay, that's very interesting. But the truth is, you know, yeah. Even, but even before we had those chemicals, right? Like you're saying, what there was, nobody was eating petrusilia, petrushka, and kinzi. We have, before we had those chemicals? Yeah. Right, but what? So that means if we, we can go over the halakha? We can transgress the halakha? Obviously not, right? That's not talking about that. You know? <laughs> right, so how were they eating? <coughs> how were they keeping the halakha? You know what I mean? This is the question. So when, when, you, when it says protects them, you know, protects them, it means... 
when they're keeping the halakha, they're tzaddikim, they're chasidim, that's why Hashem protects them. But if you don't keep the halakha, who's going to protect you? You know what I mean? What are you expecting from miracles? So what's the, what's the answer? So you know, the truth is, I, I decided to look into it, but I met, right, how severe is this prohibition, you know? Because you know what they tell you, right? It says, it's, truth, it's true. It says in the Gemara, Masechet Makot, Masechet Eruvin, two places. It says in both places like this, you know? If a person eats an aquatic uh, bug, that means that it grows on the sea, grows on the water, right? He transgresses four prohibitions from the Torah. So when you eat chazir, when you eat pig, it's only one prohibition. Can you imagine? But when you're eating aquatic bug, four prohibitions from the Torah, which prohibitions, by the way? It says about sherets, you know, they're called sherets, these things. So every time it says in the Torah, you know, it's, it's talking about this. Sherets. So, if you, if you eat a land insect, like an ant, nemala, right, nemala, how much you transgress? Five. Oh, five. Oh. Right? And if you eat something which flies in the air, like a zvub, like a, like a fly, six! Oh! <laughs> huh? What do you say about that, huh? That's what they tell you, right? They say, oh, what? You eating those salads over there in the restaurant? You know how much you're transgressing over there. Worse than pig. <laughs> pig is only one, and those salads could be five or six, depending on what's going on there, where it came from. Right? So, is that really the truth, by the way, when we're eating salad, and maybe there was a bug in there that we didn't see, right, and we ate it. Do we transgress five or six prohibitions from the Torah? Huh? <laughs> God bless you, God bless you. Everything is makhluket. But, you know, what's the halakha, by the way? Right? We have to know. So the truth is, ah, I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, and it says, Satan will believe the bank, right? Yeah. They see and send in the majority, then they eat the majority. Right, but let's say, you know, I, I, I didn't go with the majority. You know, I ate one for, for the minority. Yeah. <laughs> it was a minority bug. <laughs> you know? So what happens over there? You know what I mean? What happened? I did six prohibitions from the Torah if I ate that thing. So the answer is no way. Ah, what, you kofer? What, what, you don't believe what it says in the Gemara? It says five, six in the Gemara. Well, you don't believe the Gemara? Yes, we do. But we have also other things, you know, you have to learn. Besides the Gemara, you have to also go into the Rishonim, right? So there's a, there's a chuba of the Rashba. Several places, by the way. There's a chuba. There's also Torah uh, Bait. And also uh, another book that he wrote. So anyway, it says over there, two or three places the Rashba writes something interesting. So he says that there are certain bugs, you know, which called by, by the way we call that in in halakhic terminology we call that beria. You know, it's like a total creation, it's a total body. So it doesn't get bottled, by the way, right? According to it, doesn't doesn't get bottled when it's beria. Doesn't get nullified. So uh, you, have to, you have to remove it or, or throw it away. That's what it says, right? But it says the Rashba, I'm sorry. What do you mean by Beriyah? Huh? Beriyah means it's a living creature, like, you know, like something, a total creation. Okay. Total creation, total body, right? It's a, it's a full body. It's a full body. So it doesn't get bottled, doesn't get nullified, right? According to, yeah, so, yeah. So now here's the thing. <clears throat> comes the Rashba and says something unbelievable. He says that, but there are, you know, birya, certain insects, right? Insects in general, whether it's a fly or a yitush, you know, a mosquito, or uh, any other insect, like an like a ant, nimala. So he says over there that these, uh, these insects don't really have fully the din of birya. So you know why that is? Ah, I'll tell you a secret over here. 
What's the secret? So says the Rashba, because it's not in Tam Lifgam. You ever hear this in Halakha, what that means? That means it's giving a bad taste. You understand? Because these insects don't taste good. They're disgusting. You know? If you eat a fly, you're going to throw it up. <laughs> because it's disgusting to you. Okay, but wait. Let's go step by step. We're going to get to the salad. Believe me, we'll get there. We'll get there. We'll get there. Just to explain to you, right, step by step. I'm sorry. Someone... Eat what? Right, there are some crazy people who eat them. You know, I know that for sure. But in general, you know, in general, the robe of the people considered to be disgusting. So stay away from it, you know? You're, you're right. It's true what you're saying. So what, what does that matter? So says the Rashba, it doesn't have fully the din of Briya. What does that mean? That it's not allowed to eat it by itself. As, as, the, as the Gemara says, right? If you eat it by itself, you're either four or five or six, right? That's what we said, right? Depending on which one you eat. Which one you enjoy? The water, the fire, the land guy, you know, whatever, right? Whichever like, why you, the one you would like. Either you're four or five or six, but, says the Rashba, because they have a bad taste, not ten times they've gone, so he says, if they're mixed in something else, it gets bottled by in majority. In other words, if it's 51% kosher, and 49%, right, some uh, ants, whatever, right, got mixed in together, made a mixture, so says the Rashba, it's mutar from the Torah to eat that. Because it's not a tam if gum. It's giving a bad taste. No, this is not what he was telling him, but this is what I'm telling you. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry, go ahead. The question is, uh, when the Rambam or, or whatever it says about thing, this thing today, and then I should talk, I a little bit understand in the rest houses, because I was in the oh. rest houses. Today, you go in the rest houses, they don't use a soil at all. It's called hydroponic. <laughs> they're growing, if you're going to see how they're growing, it's no bugs, it's no flies, nothing. It's right. This close. It's true. That's what we're saying. There's a there's a greenhouse, right? We're talking about the greenhouse, <laughs> not warehouse, so greenhouse. greenhouse. Even they were using right. the soil, but so, now they're yeah. not using it at all. Ah, you, you should know. They're still growing a lot on on the ground, a lot, a lot. Most of it, most of it is on the ground. Go to California, you're gonna see over there a big, 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 big ground over there, full of dirt and everything. Okay. So that's yeah. what I wanna tell you. So yeah. Now, if you're gonna check a little bit on the internet, and yeah. you're gonna get interesting how what is called vertical farming. You're gonna understand because they don't using it all. No soil, no... But even if they're not using soil, right? Here's the thing. Because it's open, you know, if there's no closure... It's closed. Yeah, not all of them. Not, it's not, not, they're not everybody's growing like that. Most people are not growing like that. Most you know, this is, a, this is a minority. Now it's yeah. very big thing. It's a very big thing, you're right. Maybe 10%, maybe 20%, but 80% is not like that. Even more, but you yeah. say if you can grow something on the 1,500 feet... Uh, uh, ground, right? Yeah. You can build close this 1500 uh, yes. facility, build facility, and you can do like with the same uh, amount of the house, you can build six, seven stores, and you do ten times more. I understand you, but here's the thing, you know, even if you close it, by the way, the bugs, they get in anyway. You know why? Because when you open the door, they, they, they sneak in. So it has to be made in a way... Believe me when I tell you, like in your house, when you open the door in your house, the, 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 the fly comes in. It's the same thing. Just do me a favor. Just, uh, read one article about the I've read, believe me, I've read about a lot of things about this, no, but that's not the issue. I, understand, I got it, I got you. I understand you, but here's the thing, right? W whether it's vertical or not, the bugs are getting in there, you know? So therefore, you know, in the place where Heksher, Rabbinic Heksher, you know what they do? They have three doors, you know? So therefore, when you, when you have to get in there, you have to open three doors so the bugs don't get in. You know? But if there's only one door there, for sure the bugs will get in eventually. That's not a, that's not a big thing you know, for them. They're very sneaky, you know, those bugs, you know? It's young. Shezra, Shezra, it's young. For example, Holland tomatoes, yeah. you, you know, spoke, that's a spoke, yeah. right? It's a spoke, and you have inside, and it's uh, uh, in the air, like, with the... With right, the I understand. Okay, we got that, but anyway, the, right, the point is like this, right? We have to, make, you have to understand. 
So says the Rashba, okay? Says the Rashba, when it's a mixture, it's kosher. But there's one thing, which is like this, you know? What the thing is, is that if you can see it, if you can identify it, you have to remove it, you know? So the question, the rabbi said so. You have to remove that. It says in the Gemara. So the Rashba says, why did the rabbi say you have to remove it if it's kosher? This is the question, you know? Because now ah, what do you say? Because now you see. Okay, but it's kosher. No, but you see, because it's, because the Torah says, when the Torah says, yeah. right? So when you see, you have to remove it. The Torah doesn't say that. But, but here's the thing, the rabbi said it that. Says in Abib. So if you saw a bit, like an intentional... That's only if it's by itself. But if it's in a mixture, the rabbis, the Torah doesn't say nothing about that. But here's the thing, it gets bottled barot. So says the Rashba, the reason is because the rabbis decreed that if you don't remove it, you may come to eat that thing, you know? It may be in your mouth. So what's going to be is that you're only going to have the bug in your mouth, you know, and nothing else. So you're going to eat it alone by itself without a mixture. You may get it in your mouth there, you know, just by itself. You understand? So this is what the rabbis were worried about. It's not going to be a mixture. It's going to be only the thing in your mouth, the bug. And this is the reason why they made the takana to remove it. But here's the thing now, right? Here's the, here's the bottom line, though. Here's the catch, the clincher. The clincher is like this. Those bugs, you know, that we're talking about in Petruzilia, you know, in parsley, and uh, we're, we're talking about in, uh, right, in cilantro and things like this. Are they, are they so big, those big bugs? No, we're talking about tiny little things. You can barely see them. You understand? So is there such a thing like that, that a person is going to get like one in his mouth like that and eat it by itself? No, because usually they're stuck on the leaves, you know? There's no such a thing like that. So therefore, the truth is, you know, that, but even the Rashba agrees one thing, that if you can't remove it because you can't see it, or it's very hard to find it, you know what it says, right, in the Gemara? It says, Nonitan Torah le Malachi. Malachi Asharet. What does that mean? We're not angels, you know? The Torah doesn't expect us to look for three hours for a bug in order to eat the food. You know what I mean? So therefore, the rule is, you know, that if you can't find it quickly, and you can't see it, you can eat it. Because the rabbis did not decree in that case. They only decreed when, when you actually see it, you know, it's there, you can find it easily. Or let's say you can filter it out, you know, with filtration or something like that. But if you can't, there's no way to do it. What can you do? So therefore, in a case like that, it's mutar. So therefore, the truth is, you know, what I want to tell you is, I'm glad you stayed. Nechila, that I held you up. But this is a very, very important thing. You know? Very more, I'm sorry, Nechila, I apologize. But what I want to tell you is, you know, bottom line is that because of this, the ones who don't eat, you know, Gush Katif and these greenhouse, they have what to rely on. You know, especially if they soak it, you know, in water, because a lot of them are going to be removed like that. And whatever happens afterwards, it's a suffix. We don't even know if there's any bugs there. You know, we're the 50 50. Right, right. But you know what it is? You know why? Because I'll tell you why. The rabbi was right. You know why? Because if you have it, you know, it's very easy to use it. Why not? But I'm talking in a place where you don't have it so much. You know, it's not so easy to use it. So in a place like that, you know, it's not ikaradin, you know, that's what I'm trying to tell you, you know. So there's what to rely on without that as well. Especially, by the way, says the Rajpa, if it got cooked. You know why? Because the body gets dissolved, gets mashed up. You know, so it's not called Bria anymore. It's not called Bria. And some, some say also even like when, when they freeze. Right, yeah, it breaks, the body breaks, yes, freeze dried. Chazaku Baruch, Baruch Adonai Le'olam, Amen, Amen, Rebi Hanani, Amen, Kachomer, Ratsa Kadosh Baruch, Lo Zohar Yisrael. Bring it on, bring it in. We need two more, two more. Call those guys out there. One more, one more. Kidder Tizet Tikwinda. How do you mean, Kidder Tizet People are on vacation. The touch of the area, Chalki. 